Hey everyone, Tony from TN30 Studio and welcome back to the channel. Today we are sharing creative tips and tools in V-Ray 5. Today's video is all about tips, tricks, and solutions to common rendering challenges. So some of these tips will help you with composition, adding details, and overall achieve some creative results. So hopefully by the end of the video, you will add something new to your workflow. Today, we also have a great sponsor for today's video, so be sure to watch all the way till the end. I also want to thank everyone that likes, share, and watches the video. If you're new, welcome to the channel. Be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification so you don't miss on future uploads. So let's move on to tip number one. So let's get started with a combination of tips that are going to make material and lighting setup faster. First, you want to use Material Override, which lets you select one material to replace all the materials in your scene. This can be extremely helpful when you're testing lights and materials before making production rendering. If you go over to your settings, scroll to the bottom, and you can enable Material Override, select the color or material to be used in your scene. Use this along with interactive rendering and you can get real-time results for all the lights that you set in your scene. Furthermore, you can use the V-Ray interaction tool which lets you interact with many of the V-Ray assets without opening the asset editor. When you're ready to edit your materials, simply go to that material and uncheck this box that says can't be overridden and you can focus on that material alone without disabling the material override. This simple workflow can save you tons of time while help you to stay focused and organized. This is an extremely powerful function that converts groups and components to a special V-Ray object. This V-Ray object lets you clip, expose, and cut away parts of your model. With this, you can easily render in small spaces, create long sectional renders, accurate 3D floor plans, and much more. So there are two ways for you to use the V-Ray Clipper. One is to convert an object into a V-Ray Clipper, and the other is to use the SketchUp section tool. So let's start by creating a section in our scene. Keep in mind that sections are automatically recognized as V-Ray clipping objects. As you can see, the same way the section cut is visible in your SketchUp viewport is the same way that it reflects in your V-Ray rendering. The opening has a very strong impact in our scene and for this enclosed space, you can see the sunlight come directly into the space and the mirror reflecting the outside environment. So let's go into our geometry tab, select the active V-Ray Clipper, and let's review the available parameters. Use object material refers to the material used at the point of intersection. So that is referring to this area right here. Now by default, the same object material is used to cover the intersection. And by disabling this option, you can link one material to be used here instead. So I'm going to select one of my test materials and you can see how that works on the rendering preview. Let's expand our options and we will find three additional settings. So this first option controls whether the light is affected or not. Right now we have the surrounding lights and sunlight come into the space. So if we disable this option, you can see how the sunlight is no longer visible and you are left with the artificial lights that you have in your scene. The next option is the camera rays. This affects the reflection, refraction, and the GR rays through the clipping object. So if you pay attention to the mirror and other reflecting surfaces, it currently reflects the exterior environment. So by enabling this option, all of those surfaces will reflect the rest of the model that is currently invisible to the camera. 
The last option is the clip light geometry. This will clip away any light assets that you may have in your scene. So for example, if you have rectangle lights, mesh lights, or any type of light assets, you will be able to switch them on and off through the clipping object. The other way to use V-Ray Mesh Clipper is to convert a group or a component into one. So if you have a custom shape, you can click on this icon to convert it into a mesh clipper. And now this entire shape acts as an object that you can subtract or intersect with your model. Having a custom shape gives you a little bit more flexibility and you can be as creative as you want in terms of how you want to cut a section into your model. Now this tip alone is a great way to achieve realistic results in your renders because edges are now 100% sharp in the real world. Now one way you can do this in SketchUp is to use a plugin called Round Corners that quickly lets you chamfer or round your corners with three different profiles so it's a great way to do this directly in your model. I have a link in the description for a tutorial and where you can download this plugin. Now there's a very simple and effective way to round your edges in V-Ray without affecting your model. So for our sync material, let's go to the bump settings and add the edge texture. Now for a simple round edge effect, you want to increase this width value. Usually smaller values tend to give you better results, so be sure to experiment with these numbers. You also want to be careful not to increase this value too high because it can start to look a bit unrealistic. If you want a bit more control over the corners to apply the effect, you can choose between the concave and the convex edges of your object. Now let's say you want to add the V-Ray edges to a material that already has a bump or a normal map. Then your solution is to use the bump material. This material lets you combine a generic material and add additional bump map details to it. So let's create a bump material. Add the base material here that you want to add the edges to. and add the V-Ray Edge texture on the bump settings here. So this is our result. The rounded edges are produced during rendering time. So this is a good trick to incorporate if you also want to speed up your modeling process. Before we continue on our list, we want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is an online community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. You can explore new skills, deepen an existing passion, and get lost in your creativity. If you're looking for classes that challenge your creative skills, such as starting a YouTube channel, then I suggest you check out YouTube Success, Script, Shoot, and Edit with MKBHD. If you're leaning towards architectural representation, then I suggest you check out Architecture Collage by Steven Rubio, the creator of Show It Better. And if you're simply looking for a guide in V-Ray for SketchUp, then I suggest you check out this great class by Tanish Patel. This is an easy to follow class that shows you how to model in SketchUp and render with V-Ray. So if you are interested in these classes and you're ready to challenge your creative skills, the first 1000 people to click the link in the description will receive a one month free of Skillshare Premium. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning that there are no ads and they are always launching new premium classes so that you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. So we want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Now let's take this for example. Anytime you have a surface with a color that is highly saturated, it can cause something called color bleed. This happens where light bounces off that color and causes the color to bleed onto other surfaces. Now, even though this is something that happens naturally, it can cause other colors to appear inaccurate. So if we look at this example and we render the scene, you can see that the orange color 
it completely bleeds out to the other surfaces. As a solution, you can create a new override material or add the override settings from the attributes menu into your generic material. If we look over our override options, we can customize each of these parameters for this one specific material. So here we are looking for the GI parameter and by customizing this material, we have control over what bounces off this surface when it's hit by light rays. So let's create a generic material and I'll set a different color for the diffuse. So I'm going to try purple, but now I'm going to take this material and add it to the GI parameter. As you can see from the results, even though we have an orange surface, I've changed the global illumination to, to cast the purple material when it hits the surface. So now that we have an idea of how that works, I'm going to change that diffuse material somewhere between gray to a white diffuse color. And now we've completely removed the orange color bleeding we had in the beginning. And that will be all for this video. Hopefully you found these tips useful and you've learned something to add into your workflow. As always, thank you for watching all the way to the end. Be sure to comment down below and let me know what you'd like to see next on the channel. As always, like, share, subscribe, hit the bell notification, and I'll see you guys next time.